Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a banned Panharmonican deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And of course, the centerpiece of the deck is the Namesake Artifact, a 4-mana rare from Kaladesh Remastered, saying if an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent we control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So for the purposes of this specific deck list, it just means that creatures with ETB effects will trigger that effect an additional time, and there's no shortage of ETB effects effects in the deck. So let's take a look at the rest of the list here, starting out with a bit of early ramp, because Penharmonicon is a 4 mana do nothing artifact the turn it comes into play, so we want to try and accelerate our mana to potentially play Penharmonicon on turn 3, or maybe play Penharmonicon and some beneficial ETB effect in the same turn, so we can get an advantage from it right away. So we've got a full play set of Gross Spiral, which lets us draw a card and put a land from our hand onto the battlefield, and Explore, which is a sorcery speed version of Gross Spiral, although there is a subtle difference in this deck when it comes to branch loft pathway. If we try and put pathway in play with gross spiral, it will always put the front side of the pathway in play. So in this case, it will always be the green half. So we do have to be a little bit careful when it comes to that interaction. And then we also have two copies of Elvish Visionary as a 1-1 that when it enters the battlefield lets us draw a card. So that also works nicely with Penharmonican. Then the main removal spell in the deck is Skyclave Apparition, a 2-2 core spirit that when it enters a battlefield can exile up to one target non-land, non-token permanent we don't control with converted mana cost 4 or less. And when Apparition leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner creates an XX blue illusion creature token where X is the converted mana cost of the exiled card. And I'll leave it as a surprise what happens if you exile multiple things with Apparition and then the Apparition leaves the battlefield, you'll have to tune in for the video to see what happens. Then we've got one copy of Fierce Empath, which is a 1-1 one, one elf that when it enters a battlefield lets us search our library for a creature card with converted mana cost 6 or greater and then put it into our hand. And we've got three different tutor targets that we can search up with our Fierce Empath and particularly the combo of Hornet Queen into Crater Hoof Behemoth is a very nice one. So we can potentially search up both if we have Panharmonican in play and then play our Fierce Empath afterwards. And then the MVP of the deck is Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, a great card by itself, banned in multiple formats, but it's even better in this deck thanks to Panharmonican, as we get double the ETB trigger when Uro enters the battlefield, so we get to gain 6 life and put 2 lands in play, and putting lands in play is very useful early in the game, but in the late game this deck can draw a ton of cards, so being able to put those extra lands in play with Uro is also very useful. Then at 4 mana, besides the full playset of Panharmonican, we also have 2 copies of a Yasharn Implacable Earth, Earth, which is just a well-positioned card in Historic at the moment, and when Yasharn enters the battlefield we also get to search for a basic forest and basic plains, so that can also potentially synergize with Panharmonican, although it's unlikely that we'll have many forest and plains left by the time we play Yasharn with Panharmonican in play, since we only have two plains and two forests in the deck. And then we also have two copies of Wrath of God, just to give us an extra answer to those creature tribal decks that tend to be very aggressive, but don't necessarily recover all that well from a Wrath of God. And then at 5 mana, the full playset of Cloud Blazer, a 2-2 flyer that when it enters the battlefield lets us gain 2 life and draw 2 cards. So this is amazing with Panharmonican. And then topping off our curve, we've got Kogla at 6 mana which can fight stuff and also destroys artifacts and enchantments when it attacks. And for 1 and a green we can return a human we control to its owner's hand to make Kogla indestructible until end of turn. And that can potentially come up in the late game if we happen to have a Cloud Blazer in play access to a ton of mana. We can just start picking up our Cloud Blazer with Kogla's ability, just so we can replay Cloud Blazer and draw more cards. Then we also have a singleton copy of Hornet Queen, a 7 mana 2 2 flying Death Touch insect that when it enters the battlefield creates 4 1 1 green insect creature tokens with flying and Death Touch, so also combines quite nicely with Penharmonican. And especially if we then can follow it up with a Crater Hoof Behemoth, a 5 5 beast with haste that when it enters the battlefield, creatures we control gain a trample and plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures we control. So if we can play Hornet Queen with a Penharmonican in play, make 8 insect tokens. Tokens, we will have 10 creatures in play by the time we play Crater Hoof Behemoth, and we get to double the trigger, so you can do the math, but it's a lot of damage. And then going over the mana base, we do want a lot of lands, so we can put those in play with cards like Gross Spiral, Explore, and Uro, so 26 lands total, full play set of Fabled Passage, which can also make it easier to escape Uro, and then we've got two of each basic land to search up, alongside all 12 Shock Lands, Hallowed Fountain, Temple Garden, Breeding Pool, and four of the Green-White Pathway. 
So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. So ideally we avoid searching up plains and forests since we can get those with Yasharn. So I guess that means I'm getting an island, although that will mean I don't get to play Apparition on turn 3 if I really have to. But against a Yorion, what looks like maybe a control deck, we probably won't need to play Apparition right away. And we found another white source anyway. Maze Mine Tome on turn 2. Could Apparition the Tome here. Yeah, don't hate it. And then wait a turn on Yasharn. And then we're hoping to draw something like Uro, Cloud Blazer. For now we can explore. Another Apparition. I guess we could wait one turn on Apparition or I could just get rid of Ascanta now. Getting to play Asharn is pretty tempting just to get a 4-4 in play. And letting them mill one card with uh, Ascanta is probably fine. So white or green. Let's go with green. Get our nice Bob Ross basic lands and attack for two. So if they have a Wrath of God, that's fine. It's another tap to drown Catacomb and they put Yorion in hand. All right, Uro, that's a nice draw. We've got three cards in Graveyard already. So yeah, let's play Uro. And there's Penharmonican, perfect. So I'll play Penharmonican and then hang on to my Apparition for now. As to not overextend into a Sweeper. And then if they do wipe the board, I'll be able to escape Uro, which will draw me two cards. All right, opponent just plays Yorion. Cannot uh, excel that one with Apparition. Put a Cloud Blazers, sure a nice draw. Oh yes. So... Yeah, I guess we'll just play another Uro here. Crater of Behemoth is also looking quite nice. So next turn we might be able to just attack for lethal. Another Maze Mine Tome. How much mana do we have? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. But our opponent's tapped out so we don't need to worry about a counter spell. Get my last islands. And yeah, I think we're good to go. Could even play Apparition first and then still Crater Hoof. Just to get an extra creature in play. Yeah, I think that's uh, enough damage here. Well, that was just about the perfect game against Asper Control. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand, plenty of interaction with double Skyclave Apparition, and then uh, Uro to draw some cards, gain some life, you know, do kind of everything. 
And a turn one ginger brood of a watery grave, so some sort of artifact synergy deck. Ooh, panharmonican. Next turn we can decide to apparition, or we can just Uro. Or we can wait on Uro until after we play panharmonican. Thoughtseize is gonna have a look. And yeah, I'm not sure what they'll take. They could go after panharmonican. Probably makes the most sense. Takes one of the apparitions. Ooh, backup panharmonican. Opponent could easily have counter spells like metallic rebuke. I think in this case we can take it slow and just try and get more value from our creatures by playing panharmonican first, since my opponent doesn't have a lot of pressure in place, so we're not necessarily forced to play our stuff right away. Alright, opponent taps out for Psy. And we're gonna tap out for Panharmonican. And then we can try and fight through some counter spells since we've got a lot of action in hand. Of course, Apparition resolving means we can exile two things here, which would be pretty good. Steel Overseer to play. All right. Now if they have Metallic Rebuke, we could be in trouble. Instead, we're gonna tap out for Stone Cold Serpents. All right. So Apparition can exile two things. I don't think we can wait on it. And then get rid of Steel Overseer and Psy. And then Kongla's gonna be great if we get to it eventually. And we should have enough life gain that we're not going to die to these small artifacts. Although, skilled animator making a Thopter into a 5-5 five five is scary. So if I were to trade for Stone Coil, my opponent would get a 5-5 five five Apparition token, which is a lot of damage, so I'm probably going to take it all here. Alright, well, let's go to hope to draw some lands. Alright, that works. And another land. So, next turn we've got a few options, including Kogla fighting two things. Second skilled animator would be game over. They did not make brute unblockable. So I'll just block the brutes. Fatal Push finishes off Apparition, gives the opponent a 5-5 five five token here. Alright, well, uh, Cloud Blazer gaining 4 is probably not going to cut it, so I think it's time for Kogla. And then I don't want to lose Kogla in the fight, so I can fight Animator, Serpent, Thopter shrinks down again. I would still be dead to removal on Kogla but it does block the 5-5, five five. and then I'll go to 1, next turn Cloud Blazer stabilizes us. That seems reasonable. Uh, is there an alternate play? I can play Growth Spiral, but then I wouldn't be able to escape Uro. Yeah, it's gonna be Kogla. So fight Animator. Fight Stone Coil, I think. Could also fight one of the Flyers, but no, that's worse, because then if they attack with everyone, I'll be dead. Alright. Well, I'm dead to a lot of things, but on board, we're okay. So 
So we go to one. All right, I think it's time for Cloud Blazer to shine. If I play Grow Spiral, I'm still one card short of escaping Uro. Get to gain four, draw four. Feels good. And then I think Kogla can even attack. Since now we get to play Visionary as an extra Chum Blocker. Also have the ability to pick up our Cloud Blazer with Kogla, but it's not a priority right now. The Kogla attack could be a little bit greedy if my opponent has Fatal Push for Visionary, but Cloud Blazer can still chump the 5-5. Five five. And then we have to discard to hand size, Gross Spiral can go. I guess another skilled animator kills me still. Yeah, the Coggle attack was probably pretty bad. Alright, and our opponent concedes. Next turn we get to escape Uro. Could even play another Panharmonicon first, or we could just play Crater Hoof and potentially kill the opponent, so... Yeah, close game here against the blue-black artifact deck. I liked the sequencing early on, the later turns probably could have played a bit better, but uh, didn't get punished. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Fable Passage wants to get Canova Plains, but we also need to get Forester Island for Gross Spiral. Alright, that makes it easier. So, I think I will... Fabled Passage turn 1 means I will have to maybe shock myself a little bit. But that's the cost of doing business. So turn 1, still want to get either an island or a forest here. Forest is probably the priority. Do need double blue right away. Opponent appears to be on maybe a mono black aggro or zombies deck. And then we can maybe play turn 3 Panharmonicon into Apparition, exiling two things. Ooh. Turn 2, Rotting Regisaur. Oh, change of plans. We're gonna have to exile that thing as soon as possible. Still probably get a uh, forest here. And then we can Grow Spiral. Put in Temple Garden, next turn play Pathway. Another Diagraph Ghoul. And a Shadow Spear. Which they could equip if they sacrifice Ghoul, but they're not going to. Well, our opponent is presenting Lethal next turn. I guess I can even explore firsts. And then now I can probably get an island, so we've got double blue for Uro. So our opponent had a very explosive start, but hopefully they don't have many leftovers here. And then Uro. And Kogla should be able to stabilize us nicely. Feed the Swarm kills Apparition. But they only get a 3-3 token here. And our Graf Ghoul gets in for two. Explore the draw. So I don't hate just playing Panharmonicon. I do risk maybe taking lethal if my opponent goes 
like uh, land into a rankle. Equipping Shadow Spear by itself isn't enough. And then next turn with Panharmonica in play get to gain 6 with Uro. Which is pretty good and maybe I get to Uro a second time as well. Or I could find two things with Gogla. If I Uro now, go up to 10 and then I get to explore as well. It is probably safer to Uro now than it is to play Panharmonican. Or I could explore. If I draw land, I can still Panharmonican. Yeah, although it has to be an untapped land that doesn't cost me life. And then I can still Uro. Yeah, I guess we'll do that. And then maybe next turn I can go Panharmonican plus Visionary and get a Chum Blocker. Alright. Equips Shadow Spear. Could just escape Uro next turn, which is also reasonable. I don't mind drawing another land here, so I'll wait on sacrificing Fabled Passage. Picked up Hallowed Fountain, so what's the play? Could go Panharmonican and then just play Uro for 3 mana. If I go Kogla, if they have instant speed removal, that's bad for me. Just escaping Uro might be the safest play, and then we can still play Visionary afterwards. Yeah, as much as I want to get Panharmonican in play, it's not entirely safe to do so. Let's see if they have removal for Uro here. If not, we're already stable. It's gonna be a kicked Blood Chief's Thirst. And then I don't mind chomping the 3-3. Three, three. Alright, so four cards in Graveyard. Yeah, I mean, I'm still in the same situation where a top deck Rankle kills me if I go Panharmonican plus Uro. Now is maybe a better time for Kogla since my opponent can't kill it in response to the fight. And then, can I do anything else? 7 mana? Probably not. And then we'll kill the bigger creature. And I'm not dead to... A single removal spell, although I'm still dead to a rankle, I guess, because that can just fly over and deal four. And yeah, our opponent packs it in, Kogla can attack, destroy Shadow Spear, and then didn't get to play Panharmonican, sadly, but once we get to play Panharmonican combined with Uro, we can quickly go back to our starting life total and take over from there. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Bit of ramp into a Cloud Blazer. Opponent with a Graph Digger's Cage, so that's going to stop Uro from getting escaped. That's fine. And then for now, Temple Garden will do. So is this a colorless deck? It looks like it. Turn to Mindstone. And then I guess we can explore... Mindstone into put Gigantha in hand. They can play Gigantha thanks to Ether Hub. We're just gonna grow spiral. 
And there's Panharmonicon, perfect. So we'll play Panharmonicon before Cloud Blazer, most likely. And our opponents might be playing something like Ugin the Spirit Dragon, which is pretty effective, but at least it doesn't get rid of our colorless artifact here. And then we can maybe try and kill in one turn with Crater Hoof. Alright, Hardcast, Gigantha, Skyclave Apparition could get rid of multiple Mind Stones. So for now we'll just play Panharmonicon. Golos could get the uh, five color cataracts to use Golos's ability. And there it is. The Wrath of Gods also looks good. So I could Wrath. I guess I don't have four white sources, so kind of regretting the pathway decision now. Didn't really plan on needing four white mana. So. I mean, Wrath of God here is probably the play. Could also just Apparition, get rid of double Mind Stone, jump with Apparition and then Wrath of God. But then I can tap Gigantha for mana to still use Golos. So yeah, I think we should just Wrath. And hope they don't have something big here. Alright, Karn's kind of scary, but we can also exile that with Apparition. What are they going to get? Another Golos, fair enough. Uro with a draw. And now the problem is they have mana untapped, so they can sack Mind Stone if I try and exile it with Apparition. Could get rid of Cage and Karn, and then just play an Uro here. That seems totally reasonable. Another Panharmonicon. Yeah, let's not get too greedy. And then we're not too far from escaping Uro. I will be better prepared next time. So our opponent's got 8 mana. Extinction event to exile apparition, that's fine. So they get a 5-5 five, five token here, the sum of Karn plus Grafdigger's Cage. And a Myriad Constructs. Alright, how much mana do I have? 8 potentially, so not enough for Cloud Blazer plus Panharmonicon. Now yeah, let's just play Cloud Blazer then. And next turn I could Panharmonicon plus something else. Happy to chump with Cloud Blazer to fuel Uro. Koggle is also pretty good in this matchup. Another Extinction event on Odd. I'm gonna take 9. And a Guardian Idol. Alright, my opponent's on empty. Seems like a good turn for Kogla. And then Apparition, can I play both? I can. Gets rid of Guardian Idol Mindstone. Sure. Seems good. Uh, Myriad Constructs. Only makes it one once when it becomes a target of a spell and not an ability. So I could also Apparition, Construct and Idol here. That's maybe better. And then the second fight will submit zero. So they don't get any Mind Stone value. But they will sacrifice one anyway. And then Kogla can attack and kill Golos next turn. I 
Buried Ruin can potentially get back. A Golos from the Graveyard as well. But Kogla can just keep destroying them. And another Guardian Idol. We probably have Lethal here with Crater Hoof. Gives all creatures plus six plus six. Yeah, that's just game. Alright, so... Fun game here against the Colorless Ramp deck. And Crater Hoof Behemoth shuts the door very quickly. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with no green mana, sadly, so I'm gonna have to take a mulligan. This is better, and I'm sorry, Hornet Queen, you'll have to wait. Ooh, Panaharmonican. Nice draw. So we're looking at turn to Explorer, hopefully turn 3 Panharmonican, although against a blue counterspell deck, it's probably not gonna work out. Alright, maybe just blue-white flyers. So Wrath of God is going to be amazing here. And we drew a land, perfect, so... Okay, maybe even Panharmonicon before we Wrath of God, just to make the opponent overextend a bit more. Just have to do some math to figure out if we're not that to a Rally of Wings, but I don't think that is the case here, although it is getting close. If my opponent has Lofty Denial, I'll regret playing Panharmonicon here over just wiping the board. But they're probably going to add more Flyers. Another Skycat into Sailor. And we'll see if uh, this is good enough. Empyrean Eagle, that's fine. And now it's Uro's time to shine. And I think I'll just take four, since we can play another Uro then. And we'll put a pathway in play. Alright. Not too far from escaping Uro. Cloudblazer is nice too. So what's the play here? I've got seven mana, four cards in graveyard. So yeah, if I draw some lands here, I might be able to escape still. And if not, we'll play Cloudblazer. All right, Fabled Passage should do it. And then I guess we'll spiral first, just so we can leave the second ore in the graveyard as well. Get to gain six. And next turn, maybe go Panharmonican into Cloudblazer. Am I dead to a Rally of Wings here? I might be. 9 plus 6 would have been Exaxis, so luckily they didn't have it. Alright, so let's focus on not dying. So maybe I should wait on the second Panharmonican in case I draw into Skyclave Apparition here, which is a little safer. Opponent can draw with Spectral Sailor. Alright, there's Skyclave Apparition. So we'll attack. And then we can exile maybe one Empyrean Eagle, one Spectral Sailor. And if they don't have a Lofty Denial, that's probably game over.
Alright, and our opponent explodes. So yeah, Wrath of God definitely is saving us there. And that's also the reason why I ended up including two copies, is because of decks like these that tend to put a lot of power toughness in play very quickly. And even with Skyclave Apparition, it's usually not enough to slow them down. So we just need to have a clean board wipe to then reset the board and take over with our card advantage. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Obosh as a Prey Piercer, so it could maybe be a red aggressive deck. Well, we've got Wrath of God and Apparition, so I guess I'll try it. As we see, turn one Scorch Spitter. So your opponent only allowed to play cards with an odd converted mana cost, so can expect lots of one drops couple threes and of course the spectacle cards get to cheat a little bit and a card like Bonecrusher Giant is also allowed despite being a two mana instant with stomp so I guess we'll just play forest for now I did draw a lot of basics so at least my mana will be relatively painless guide beasts so I think the plan here is to play Apparition, hopefully trade it off, and then Wrath of God afterwards. Opponent is going to secure the Critics down to 6. Yeah, that's a very aggressive start. So what do I even exile here? I want to actively trade. Maybe the Scorch Spitter, because that's guaranteed one damage to my face if they attack with it, but I imagine they'll just attack with everyone, so it's not going to matter a whole lot. Soul Scar Mage probably has a potential of dealing the most damage total. Gotta hope they play more creatures and don't have more burn spells. Otherwise we're toast. Maybe an Infuriates. Doesn't matter where they point it. Yep. Right, so we're at 1. Opponent gets a 1 1 token. And the Light of the Stage finds collateral damage, which they can cast right now to win the game. Alright, GG's. Turn 4 kill. But yeah, that's gonna happen against the red aggressive deck on the draw. Even with interaction like Apparitions, not always enough. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Facing Temple of Mystery. So it could be an opposing ramp deck. As we see a turn to Paradise Root. Could also be the Neoform combo deck. Just gonna spiral end of turn. And yes, Shimmer Possibility definitely points towards Neoform. And uh, as it turns out, Yasharn prevents Neoform from getting cast. So it's possible they just concede to a Yasharn here. And yeah, don't see a reason not to just play Yasharn. And their opponent is reading Yasharn in disbelief. So they'll need to remove Yasharn before they can cast Neoform. And without Neoform, there's no real way for them to combo off. They do have Expansion Explosion, so that's one way to potentially kill Yasharn eventually. We're just gonna try and close out the game before that happens. So, can explore and then still play Empath. And maybe find Kogla, which is a little cheaper to play here. Yeah, that seems fine. And then Yasharn can attack as well.
Could have also gone for a Crater Hoof, since we're not too far from casting it. Could go Apparition next turn and then Crater Hoof after. But uh, Kogla fighting Celebrants seems totally fine here. They might be holding a Pact of Negation, but they can't pay for it since they're only on 4 mana. Opponent's down to 12. They're hanging in there, fighting the good fight, but they finally explode. So yeah, Yasharn, great card against the Neoform combo decks, as well as decks like Goblins, where the opponent won't be able to use Skirk Prospector or sacrifice treasure tokens. Yasharn, also the reason why I didn't end up including Gilded Goose in the deck, because it does prevent you from sacrificing your own food tokens as well. So, yeah, you do need to make a small concession by not including Gilded Goose, which does have some good synergy with Panharmonicon. But I think the way the mana game is right now in Historic, Yasharn is a worthy inclusion, as we saw in that matchup. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.